Like rain that falls to the ground and flows over the land to gutters and streams leading to a lake or ocean. Rain that infiltrates the ground also tends to follow a path through the unsaturated soil to reach the water table. Simple predictive models used to predict the fate of water and chemicals that infiltrate the ground assume that water infiltrates as a uniform front moving slowly down through the soil. This is called matrix flow. But this is not the way it always happens. Water often follows a less predictable path, a preferential path. The path water follows depends upon factors such as the soil texture, the structure of the soil, and the rate at which water infiltrates the soil. And the term used to describe subsurface flow that is not uniform, but is broken into narrow concentrated paths is called preferential flow. One cause of preferential flow is macropores in structured soils. Cracks and paths made by worms and plant roots provide low resistance paths for water to flow through quickly and bypass most of the surrounding soil. The exposed gorge bank you see here is structured in sloping layers of different types and textures of soil. As water flows vertically through unsaturated ground, different layers of soil, from hard pans to layers of coarse sand, affect infiltration by causing lateral flow over some layers. Water funneling through soil layers is another mechanism by which water may find a preferential path. This lab experiment, in which water is irrigated on sand in a glass chamber, shows the third cause of preferential flow, an unstable front of water, which tends to form in coarse sandy soils. The result of this instability is something called fingered flow. The causes of preferential flow are macropores, sloping coarse layers, and unstable wetting fronts in coarse sandy soils. Preferential flow is an interesting phenomenon but this is not the reason why it has generated so much excitement in municipalities whose sources of drinking water are groundwater, in hydrologists who model groundwater flow and the transport of chemicals to predict their fate, and in farmers who apply pesticides to their crops with fear that they will pollute the surrounding groundwater. Where preferential flow does occur, predictive models that do not consider preferential flow can give fairly accurate predictions for the concentration of fertilizer nitrates that end up in the groundwater. This is because a large percentage of the amount of nitrates applied must reach the water table to cause contamination. But for pesticides, which are usually toxic at concentrations below 10 parts per billion, these predictive models grossly underestimate the velocity of a contaminant transported in a preferential path. Many pesticides used today in the United States will break down if they are given enough time in the oxygen-rich Vado zone, the unsaturated soil above the water table but water following a preferential flow path can carry toxins through the soil so fast that they do not break down. The result is contaminated groundwater.